What's going on guys? I'm Jehovah and I just got a package in the mail and I'm super excited about it. Look what I got early guys. Call of Duty 4. Oh my god, I got it early. I found a guy on eBay selling these for $400 a copy. Had to scoop it up. Just kidding. No, for real. I, uh, I was just actually looking at my games collection over here and saw this sitting there and forgot that I had it and uh, thought it was pretty cool. So uh, let's just go through the package real quick. Let's just see what was in the Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare Limited Collector's Edition. Look, DVD with the making of Call of Duty 4 uh, Modern Warfare, a documentary on the British SAS and the level walkthrough by the developer. Also, an exclusive hardcover art book featuring never before seen concept, development, and final in game artwork. Beautiful. It's all like foily and shit, like a Pokemon card. It's so thick. All right, and here we go, guys. We have the contents of the collector's edition here, Call of Duty 4. Uh, now, as you can see, here is the DVD mentioned on the cover, Great SAS Missions. Uh, unfortunately, it's not in there. I don't know what happened to that. Um, bonus scenes of Call of Duty 4 with the developers, official trailers, developer walkthrough, all that good shit. What's on the back here? Gladiators of World War II, Secrets of World War II, Heroes and Weapons of World War II, huh, anything. I don't know, kind of interesting. I just, like I said, I don't know, it's kind of a blast from the past thing. I just saw it sitting on my shelf and I was like, what the fuck? Um, thought I'd look through it. Here we go, guys. We have the art of Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Oh, I should've got a tripod. All right, we're just gonna real quick thumb through this. But look, there's some art in here and it's pretty sexy. We're not gonna go through every page. But uh, kind of cool, I don't know, I just, like I said, I saw it sitting on a shelf, and with all the Call of Duty 4 hype, I was like, oh, I gotta look through that and see, oh look, there's like some concept art from, uh, fuck, Block, right? Oh shit, if I'd actually show it, I think that's Block, right? Fuck, what's the name of that map? It's been so long, mate. Oh, yeah, look at that. This is actually pretty cool, I'm glad I picked this up so long ago. I could probably sell this on eBay for like $97 right now, so all the COD 4 hype day. Um, anyways. And I'll leave this this black page right here. I can take a silver sharpie to PAX and maybe I can get like T Martin and Zer Grizz to sign it for me. I don't know. Just holding out for that. But anyways, yeah. I don't know. Thought maybe some of you guys hadn't uh, ever really seen the collector's edition of Modern Warfare Call of Duty 4. So thought I'd show it to you guys. Let's jump into some gameplay and talk about some shit. And welcome to the gameplay. We got some Team of Deathmatch on District here today. Just played this not too long ago. Had some good fun. Uh, I've got two maps right here. We'll, like, we'll see District and then the, the second the second map, it'll be a surprise, but you'll like it. It'll be good. I went on a little bit of a, a nice streak on that game too. Anyways, guys, we got some stuff to talk about today. It was kind of going through my head and it got me thinking and it was just, I, don't know, I thought it'd be an interesting topic. So I wanted to talk about all the drama right now with uh, Call of Duty 4 coming out as a bonus, quote unquote, to buying Infinite Warfare. Obviously it's not a very popular opinion. A lot of people kind of upset about it, me included. I don't think that we should have to play Infinite Warfare to be able to um, show our love and our support of an old school shooter that everybody wanted a re-release of, Call of Duty 4. Um, you know, we should just be able to buy that on its own and be able to support the franchise and, and you know, if they would have taken a little more time, put out uh, all the maps instead of only 10 of them and all that good stuff, I guarantee you myself and a lot of other people out there would have been more than happy to pay, uh, you know, at least $30, $40, if not close to, a, you know, $60 full retail price. I would have, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Anyways, so I kind of wanted to make some comparisons, right? Because it's kind of upsetting, as as I said already, that you have to play, or you have to buy Infinite Warfare to get Call of Duty 4 remastered. Um, and it's, it's I think it's even more upsetting in my, my, in my mind because this is Call of Duty 4 multiplayer right here that you're watching in this video. Obviously, the servers aren't down. Uh, there's still an active player base. Everybody that's really excited about this remaster probably still has their copy of Call of Duty 4 sitting on the shelf and 
were being forced to buy the new Call of Duty title to play the one that we already all own. More than likely. Like, I, I, I mean, we all own it already. I, I, I mean, that's a pretty safe statement. I do. A lot of you guys watching already own it. And we're super excited for an HD remaster, uh, which is great. But it's kind of shitty that we can't just... I mean, it. you know, it's like, all right, we're the dumbasses that are going to buy the game again already remastered. But they're forcing us to buy the new COD title just to get that. I don't know. I think that's why it bothers me even a little bit more. Um, Call of Duty 4 is already out. There's an active... I think when I when I got on, like, at noon today, on a fucking Monday, there's 1,500 people playing. Plenty of people... Uh, you, you're gonna have a little bit of trouble getting into certain game types, obviously. But it's still there. The, the servers are still there. Uh, you'll get into a team deathmatch almost immediately. There's pretty, pretty big amount of people still playing free-for-all, search and destroy, everything. Obviously, the hype of the remaster is helping, uh, helping that a little bit, but... I, I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. Like, let's compare it to the Master Chief Collection, right? Master Chief Collection was announced, myself being a huge Halo fan, super fucking hyped. And here's some of those reasons why, right? Um, they, they made it to where Halo 2 servers, first of all, came down in like 2010, I believe, right? Other than uh, Halo 2 Vista, you couldn't play, you couldn't play online anymore. Like, you just couldn't do it. They took the servers down. So, of course, when they announced that, oh, you're going to be able to play Halo 2 on Xbox Live again, it was like, holy shit, balls, banana tits. This is amazing. Not only that, but Halo 1, you know, being a game that you could you could match make and, and find, find games and, and even earn rank and stuff like that, uh, that was never a thing on Xbox. The, uh, the multiplayer was strictly local in LAN, unless you were on PC. So, that was a really exciting thing. And I think it was justified, right? Uh, and then Master Chief Collection came out, and it was a pile of dog shit uh, as far as functionality-wise. When, when the game works, it, it's, it's amazing. I've said that a million times, and I'm beating a dead horse. But when the Master Chief Collection works, it's absolutely beautiful. But the user interface and just everything that was supposed to... You know, everything that you expected to work in that, just like inviting friends and being able to play with friends and stuff, uh, all of that didn't work. And that was a very... Um, I don't know, kind of a disappointment for me and a lot of other Halo fans out there, I think. And I'm sure it's a lot better now. I don't know, I haven't played in a while, but... Anyways, so, I think the difference in that is that there was Halo 2 servers uh, were already offline, and Halo 1 w was a thing that you couldn't just get on and do matchmaking, right? So, uh, that's a big difference between the Master Chief Collection and Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare Remastered, right? Uh, and then, you've got Gears of War Ultimate. And I, I feel like... I, I'm kind of one of the only people that got excited about that. I don't know. Uh, there's not near as many Gears of War fans out there as as what I'd like there to be, I guess. I don't know. But Gears of War Ultimate was also really exciting because I'm pretty sure the Gears of War servers never went offline. I'm pretty sure you can still get on that and play it. But there's more of a small uh, niche community that, that enjoys Gears of War, so I don't know if you would have ever gotten into a game, even if the servers are still online, which I'm pretty sure, like I said, that they were. Uh, and the difference, again, in the Gears of War Ultimate is that they took Gears of War 1 and they remastered it, but they also added game types, um, they added weapon skins, and they added player models from some of the later games. So they kind of took the first one, remastered it, and threw in new content which was really, really cool, and a reason for the fan base to get really excited about it. It wasn't just like, well, I already have a copy of Gears of War, you know, sitting on the shelf. Um, so there's so there's that. And then Gears of War Ultimate came out, and the shit worked beautifully. Like, one of the best remastered things I've ever played. It just, it works like you want it to. You get into games with friends very easily. All the weapon skins and everything are very, very cool. Um, which I think I mentioned this in a previous video, but uh, Gears of War Ultimate was essentially just a re-release of the very first game, very much the same as Call of Duty 4 Remastered, right? Uh, a brand new copy of it was $39.99, I believe, but if you wanted the edition that came with all the DLC, which was weapon skins, uh, essentially, yeah, I think that was all it was, weapon skins. If you wanted that, you had to pay an extra $20, so it was then basically a brand new retail copy price, 60 bucks, right? I bought the one with the DLC, with the weapon skins, because I thought it was fucking sick, right? So take that model, Activision, 
and apply it to Call of Duty 4, and I'm, I guarantee you, they're saying that Black Ops 3 numbers are actually really, really good right now. Like, everybody's opening the fucking uh, supply drops, whatever, whatever. If they would have taken Call of Duty 4, remastered it, and done it very similar to Gears of War Ultimate, to where, you know, sell it for $40 just for Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered, or sell it for $60 with some fucking new Call of Duty 4 weapon skins, or whatever, player models, something purely aesthetic that doesn't affect gameplay, people would have been all over that shit. They would have done it. I guarantee you they would have done it. I would have done it. A lot of other Call of Duty fans would have done it. So I don't know, that's kind of... If you're following me, I know I'm kind of throwing a lot of information out there, but if you're following my, my kind of idea, my thoughts on this whole thing, this sniper streak is actually pretty sexy right here. Th this map is really fun, um, and I went on a bit of a streak here with the sniper, but anyways, um, if you're following like my thought process here, the point is, is that everybody's freaking out. Call of Duty 4 Remastered is going to be amazing. Can't wait. I agree, but... Everybody that's super excited, guys, we have Call of Duty 4 sitting on our shelves right now. Dust it off, throw it on your Xbox. Look, I mean, I did this earlier today. It's it's already here. The graphics are good enough. I mean, obviously a remaster is going to be cool, but it, it's the game's already in front of us. The, there's an active player base and the servers are working. Uh, sure, there's a few modders. Sure, you might have a little bit of trouble getting into some game types, but I just think it's kind of crazy that Ah, we all already have it sitting on our fucking shelves. We, like, I don't know. And the fact, like I said, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Re-release it, and all the schmucks like me and, and a lot of you guys listening that want to pay money to buy the same game that we already have sitting on the shelf that's already, you know, a perfectly functional game. Um, you know, if we want to buy it again, then that's our, that's our thing. Um, but the fact that we're being forced to buy Infinite Warfare... I think it's kind of bullshit, you know, and I've said already that I'm still trying to keep an open mind towards Infinite Warfare. I'm going to try it. You never know. It could end up being a really awesome Call of Duty. It could. Um, and, you know, this being like my job, my career, I'm going to buy Infinite Warfare, you know, to at least try it out anyways and probably make a couple of videos uh, regardless. But um, I don't know. What are your all's thoughts? Do you guys think it's kind of silly that everybody's really, really excited about this remaster, even though the game's already in most of our hands, and uh, the game still functions completely fine? Like, you can you can jump on right now as you're watching this. You could pause the video, get done with the video, get on Call of Duty 4, and enjoy it, just like you did way back when. Let me know your all's thoughts. I'll be really anxious to see them. Um, like, like I said, don't get me wrong. I am really excited about a remaster, obviously. I mean... Better graphics, higher frames per second, all that good shit, you know, new consoles with a lot more people playing is going to be awesome. And I hope they do it right. I really do. I hope they do it right. Uh, because if they don't do it right, here, here's the here's the downside. If they don't do it right, if they release it and it's similar to the Halo Chief Master Collection and, you know, it's hard to invite your friends and get into a party with people and play with your friends. Um, like, I, I've told this story before, but I still can't play... Master Chief Collection with my little brother. My little brother and I will do all the things on Xbox One to make our NAT type completely open um, and we can't get into a lobby with each other. If we eject the disc, Master Chief Collection, put in Gears of War Ultimate and invite each other to that, we can get into a lobby with each other, get right into matchmaking and everything works fine. So there's a lot that we don't know yet. You know, Call of Duty 4 Remastered could come out and if it works like ass, you know, it could negatively affect the player base and say you want to get on and you want to play some free-for-all or some search and destroy or some hardcore uh, headquarters or whatever. One of the one of the uh, game types that might not have as big of a player base, um, the player base of the entire remastered edition could start falling off very soon and then it's going to fuck everybody, even the ones that do enjoy it, because there's not going to be enough players to find games and then maybe everybody will just go back to their 360 copies of Call of Duty 4. I don't know. Interesting topic. Thought I'd talk about it with you guys. Comments below. I love you. Bye.